Let's talk about China. We know that Nancy Pelosi, U.S. House Speaker, she visited uh, Taiwan, and that uh, was the highest-ranking visit uh, by a U.S. official in the last two decades. It's very important, right? You can't look at that in a vacuum and, and, and you know, say it, it doesn't carry any weight and just remove the, the context. You can't do that. Uh, as soon as she landed, the Chinese uh, began several military drills, increasing their flights over, quote-unquote, Taiwanese airspace, moving their ships closer, just basically a show of force is what they call it. It's flexing. They're flexing muscle and showing the Americans they mean business. And again, keep in mind that the way we speak about this in the West is very weird and, and insensitive to, to China and most of the world, actually. Because when you say China and Taiwan as if they're like two separate things, this is like saying the United States and Texas. I mean, <laughs> at one point, yes. But the way that they uh, not only speak about it, but treat it as some sort of future Ukraine, this is a problem. Let me tell you something, man. When you see someone like Nancy Pelosi landing in your backyard, trouble is coming. That's like the Grim Reaper. Not because of her, but because of the office that she, um, that she occupies, right? Because of the, the weight that her visit carries. That means trouble is brewing. One year after Afghanistan, spy agencies pivot toward China. So this is August 8th, 2022. In a recent closed-door meeting with leaders of the agency's counterterrorism center, the CIA's number two official made clear that fighting al-Qaeda and other extremist groups would remain a priority, but that the agency's money and resources would be increasingly shifted to focusing on China. One year after ending the war in Afghanistan, Joe Biden and top national security officials speak less about counterterrorism and more about the political, economic, and military threats posed by China as well as Russia. They say one second it's about Taiwan, and then the next second they say, well, there's a military threat posed by China. What? Which one? Name one. Just, just one. I look at the map and I see... American ships, right? I see AUKUS in China's backyard, not the other way around. You don't, you don't have Chinese ships uh, right next to Hawaii or, you know, um, anywhere near the West Coast. It's the other way around. So I don't understand what that means. What's an economic threat? You mean that they'll have a better economy? Let's continue. They say there's been a quiet pivot within intelligence agencies, which are moving hundreds of officers to China-focused positions, including some who were previously working on terrorism. And they're saying, well, you know, we still care about that. We killed al-Zawahiri, um, bin Laden's right-hand man, right man, who was the number two and then the number one in al-Qaeda. David Cohen, who's the deputy director, what did he say a few weeks ago? The agency's top priority is trying to understand and counter Beijing. The United States has long been alarmed by China's growing political and economic ambitions. China has tried to influence foreign elections, mounted campaigns of cyber and corporate espionage, and detained millions of minority Uyghurs in camps. Some experts also think Beijing will in coming years try to seize the self-ruled democratic island of Taiwan by force. Wow, what a mouthful. Do you see how they're already trying to plant these seeds in your mind and condition you and brainwash you and everybody? Oh, Taiwan is, is democratic, right? Like, as opposed to China. They have to make that distinction. It's not only self rule that's it's democratic, right? And we're all about democracy. Of course. 
influencing foreign elections? Oh yeah, the United States would never do that. Now don't get me wrong, two wrongs don't make a right, no pun intended. Just because the United States does something bad, it doesn't mean everyone else can do it. Or should, <laughs> should follow the example. The problem is, though, that it opens the door to other countries doing the same thing. Because they, f- they feel like, well, you're doing it, why, why don't we do it? Now, the thing is, it comes down to propaganda and to scale. Number one, is this true? Because I know for a fact the United States, the United Kingdom, have influenced many elections, right? Many, 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 many elections. <laughs> and when the elections don't go their way, they do a coup, right? And when that doesn't work, they send in the death squad, et cetera, et cetera. With China, I see a bias, and I don't know if what you're saying is true. They say China has detained millions of minority Uyghurs in camps. Oh, you care about Muslims now all of a sudden? You care about minorities? Really? The United States, the West, who launched the war on terror, the war of terror, they, they killed a million people in Iraq, they created millions of refugees, they bankroll Israel, they destroyed Libya, they destroyed Syria, they antagonize Iran. They occupied Afghanistan. They care about Muslims all of a sudden. Yeah, okay, sure. Intelligence officials have said they need more insights on China, including after being unable to definitively pinpoint the cause of the pandemic. And they say Beijing has been accused of withholding information about the origins of the virus. And the war in Ukraine has underscored Russia's importance as a target. The United States used declassified info to expose Russian President Vladimir Putin's war plans before the invasion and rally diplomatic support for Kiev. Jason Crow, who sits on the House Intelligence Armed Services Committee, said that a far greater exi- existential threat is Russia and China. Terrorist groups, he said, will not destroy the American way of life the way that China can. Which Chinese official said? They want to destroy the American way of life. What does that mean? Dude, <laughs> the American way of life is, is made in China, right? So you want them to just you know, act as like cheap slave labor for you, and then when they start, con- they, they become a, a contender. And I don't mean, I don't mean in an in a antagonistic manner, but simply they're just developing, just a country developing itself, building itself up. Not a perfect country, but a country that is going to overtake your economy. Oh, now they're a threat. What do you mean a threat? Who is the one that has 800 bases across the world? Who's the one surrounding China? Keep, remember, when, when the Americans and NATO were in Afghanistan for 20 years, guess who's on Afghanistan's border? Iran. China. You think they like having American bases on their border, literally on their border? Go, go put an Iranian base in Mexico and see the fucking dynamite that would explode. I mean, they, 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 would, they would launch nukes, man. I, I, I mean, who knows? <laughs> really? This is exactly what I was talking about. Look, here, here's another, uh, another quote here. This is from the CIA spokesperson. All right. Tammy Thorpe said that even as crises such as Russia's invasion of Ukraine and strategic challenges such as that posed by the People's Republic of China, demand our attention, the CIA will continue to aggressively track terrorist threats globally and work with partners to counter them. Uh, They're they're saying that there are strategic challenges posed by China, and they put that in the same boat as Russia's invasion of Ukraine. I mean, look, man, this is very dangerous because they are preparing you, they're prepping people for the next quote-unquote Ukraine, right? So the same thing that's happening now, they're going to do it with Taiwan. They're going to say, oh, we are all with Taiwan and we're going to send them all the weapons. Remember, Taiwan, <laughs> all of the military gear is from the United States. The United States does not do that because it's a fucking charity. It does that because it's money. Who do you think is, wins from that? 
Who do you think stands to gain from that? The arms manufacturers, you have boots, you have bullets, you got rifles, you got every soldier from, you know, head to toe with Ukraine. When they say they're, they're sending aid, they're sending aid by taking your money and giving it to weapons manufacturers. Someone is, someone is always um, making a lot of money, right? And the United States constantly has to find new enemies. And they're even saying, well, hey, man, we're done with, you know, terrorism. Now it's China. Or now it's Russia and soon to be China. Do you see that, how they keep moving on from one enemy to the next? Before, oh, it, it's the Soviets. Oh, communism is spreading. We have to contain it. Okay. They got rid of the Soviet Union. Then what? Oh, now it's the terrorists. Look, it's, it's all these guys that we gave money to beat the Soviets. Right? They're back and they don't like us because we put bases in their countries and we do a lot of things that piss them off. Okay. Did you go after them? Oh, no, sorry. We killed a million innocent people and displaced millions of others. But it was a success. It, there were surgical strikes. They were just drones. Nothing happened. Oh, now we're done with the counterterrorism. Now, now we have to go fight Russia. Russia, oh my god, this is the biggest war in Europe since 1945. Uh, don't mention that whole thing with Yugoslavia. Russia's the enemy. And look, it's going to be China next. Wow. Amazing. Congress has pushed the CIA and other intelligence agencies to make China a top priority. According to several people fam familiar with the matter who spoke on condition of anonymity to discuss sensitive intelligence matter pushing resources towards china has required cuts elsewhere including in counterterrorism specific figures were unavailable because intelligence budgets are classified hey guys you remember that time when uh the pentagon somehow lost 20 trillion dollars i mean my goodness even if one percent of that were true these are these are astronomical sums. I mean, this is this is unbelievable. In particular, lawmakers want more information about China's development in advanced technologies. Under President Xi Jinping, China has committed trillions of dollars in investment on quantum science, artificial intelligence, and other technologies that are likely to disrupt to disrupt how future wars are fought and economies are structured. Let me translate what they're trying to say here, and you saw this under Trump. The United States wants to control everything because it is the hyperpower. It's the hegemon. That includes big tech. You understand? When you talk about tech companies, the United States wants to have that prestige. Oh, it's Silicon Valley. It's Facebook. It's Google. It's Intel. It's all of these companies based in America. In the United States. And then when you have. Something like TikTok. That comes out of nowhere. And is the number one. App on the app store. Donald Trump. Literally banned it. Because he, they were, he was basically threatening them. He said like if you don't sell TikTok. To an American company. To an American company. You're banned. I mean it doesn't get. It doesn't get clearer than that. The United States is afraid of losing its edge, its prestige, um, and the upper hand when it comes to tech company. Okay? It's not just about war, right? Chris Stewart, a Utah Republican on the House Intelligence Committee. We are late, but it's good that we're finally changing our focus into that region. No, what, what do you mean? What, why? Why? What is, what is in that region? Why can't you just mind your fucking business? Why do you always take people's money and throw it into spying and killing and bombing? What, why do we do this in the UK and the US? What, why, why do we allow these people to do this? Who the fuck are these people? Here's a funny line. They say the CIA was also involved in some of the darkest moments of the fight against terrorism darkest moments where is this going what do you mean darkest moments they had depression what, what is this it operated secret black site jails to hold terrorism suspects 
some wrongly, and was found by a Senate investigation to have used interrogation methods that amounted to torture. Oh, so you, you tortured people. They frame it in a way like as if it's the agents who suffered. Oh, man. It, it, I couldn't stand torturing that guy, you know. It's, I went through such a dark moment. Shit, man. I bet someone who, who, who does that would, but uh, what about the people you're torturing? And the way they frame it, look how they say it. It was found by a Senate investigation to have used interrogation methods that amounted to torture. Why can't you just say the Senate found that they were torturing people? They, <laughs> it's, it's, man, honestly, it's, um, the way they frame things is incredible. If, this, if they were talking about China, they would have straight up said China is torturing people, um, and that's it. Like, they, they don't beat around the bush. And again, just, again, to, to, to show you this, like, where, where Taiwan is. You see, it, it, it's an island, right? It's not, uh, like, geographically speaking, it's not um, attached to the mainland. Now, politically speaking, realistically speaking, this is China. China does not view Taiwan as some other entity. No, it's China. So I, I've, I'm so confused when I see, for example, these articles, like in CNN, right, uh, where, where they say China is attempting to establish a new normal across the Taiwan Strait, eroding self-ruled Taiwan's territorial control and increasing the threat of a strike with each military sortie, according to officials and analysts. And they ramped up military maneuvers in the stretch of water that separates Taiwan from mainland China. So right here, okay, in this area, and the skies above it, following a visit by United States House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to the island earlier this month. Analysts say it could mark the realization of fears expressed by Pelosi and other U.S. officials that Beijing may use its military response to her visit to change the status quo with the presence of Chinese planes and ships near the island becoming more common and difficult to challenge. Remember, the United States does not recognize Taiwan as an independent country. Okay? They have an agreement with each other, and uh, that, that includes military aid, and that the United States will defend them. But it's very limited in scope. And again, Taiwan is not recognized as a country in the UN. Uh, the United States switched. Uh, it, it basically cut off diplomatic relations with Taiwan and then recognized the People's Republic of China, China, as the legitimate government. Again, I hate saying that. Like, it, uh, it, uh, like we recognize you. Like, dude, they, let's say they just established r diplomatic ties with them. That's what happened. And this is in the 1970s. Very bad what they're doing here because they're, the United States is, is moving away from the one China policy, from doing this very careful balancing act and now provoking China. I'm rarely ever doing this now, but I feel that it is so ridiculous that when you just speak common sense, you also have to preface with, but fuck the Chinese and, oh, I hate communism. And, I, and you know, I'm not saying they're good. Why, why do I have to preface that with anything? Like, do, people need all these disclaimers. It's like that article from The Guardian about sanctions on Russia backfiring. And you see them, like, in the, in the first paragraph, they're already like, Putin's brutal, da-da-da-da-da. It's so forced, you know, I can tell. It's so forced. And, and it's like, you know, you just can't speak common sense um, about, you know, topics that people have been brainwashed with, mainstream media. And we have a lot of deprogramming to do. So the CIA are publicly saying and admitting they're pivoting to China. Congress is saying that it wants them to do that and actually wants to be more involved, right? I mean, there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, budget oversight. Of course, on the contrary, 
that is something good and and sensible and when Rand Paul tried doing that with the, the billions they were sending Ukraine they wouldn't have it I can't believe that he was the only person where's Bernie you're giving away all this money with no oversight you know you have no inspector general to verify where it's going I, I just don't even know what to say my point is that you have the CIA announcing that it's setting its sights on China. Congress saying the same thing. You have Nancy Pelosi disembarking uh, in Taiwan, provoking the Chinese. And I find it, I find this very dangerous because the United States has had this, has maintained this one China policy for a long time. They are breaking with that now, bit by bit. And what they're going to do is they're going to make Taiwan the next Ukraine. And they're already conditioning you from now. They are already prepping you from now to, to hate China, to dislike China, to view China as, you know, uh, undemocratic or, or uh, you know, as, as a threat. Something that doesn't share the same values. Okay, let's say all of this were true. What business is it of yours? Why, why do... Why do the UK and the US have to go and stick their noses in every corner of the world? Why? Why isn't this money being used at home to help people? There, there are people suffering, suffering so much. They cannot get medicine, sleeping rough, they're sleeping on the street. All of this could be, so all of this could be solved. It's really disgusting to me. And what makes it so frightening is that people go along with it because the media does not tell them the truth. The media lie to them, condition them, brainwash them, and always make them accept war and always make them accept these conditions. That it's somehow okay that people you have never even heard of are deciding whether you can have health care or whether you know the NHS is going to be uh, gutted and handed over to American corporations. And, you know, making extremely dangerous uh, decisions that will affect the country uh, for decades. I mean, this is, this is so chaotic and it's unacceptable. And that's why we really, 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 really need an independent and free media. En enough with this. Enough with this. You know, CIA, they're good people at the end of the day. Look at all this counterterrorism they saved you from. Yeah? Look how lovely they are. Look at, all, look at all these people they tortured on your behalf. Look at how they dragged the United States name through the mud. Let me tell you something, man. I remember 9-11. And let me tell you something, man. When that happened, every, everybody's heart, everybody's hearts was with the United States. Everyone. Because what, that, that was horrific. And then in a matter of weeks, a matter of months, it just it escalates into something unbelievable. And then year after year, Iraq, Abu Ghraib, the Black States, Guantanamo Bay. I'm, we've had a lot of really dangerous wars in history, right? World War I. Armenian Genocide, World War II, the Holocaust, the, 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 the Cold War and all those conflicts, Vietnam, Korea, um, you know, Angola, it, so much bloodshed. You know, now with nuclear weapons, I'm really worried, man. They're, they're poking the Russians and the Chinese, and it is so, so unnecessary.